Hey everyone, I want to talk to you today about a project I've been helping out with called Ponyscape. What it is, it's a modified version of Inkscape being developed by FlutterGuy317. And what he's doing is adding a whole bunch of cool new features to Inkscape uh, that makes our vectoring life a whole lot easier. Specifically today, I want to talk about power strokes. Power strokes are one of the big draws to Ponyscape, and they are really what started the whole project. So what a power stroke is, is it'll allow you to change the width of a stroke throughout the stroke while keeping it as a stroke. So it'll allow you to make tapers and everything like that really easily. I showed you a method to do this using the pattern along path path effect, but power strokes really are a better way of going about this. So today I'm going to use as my example of this Applejack vector I did a while back. It's not a very good vector. It's not a good vector for a lot of reasons, uh, but... The one I'm really focused on is if you look at all the strokes, then they're not strokes, they're, they're outlines. And of course, this is, how, this is how we make strokes in Inkscape. We need to convert them to paths and then adjust them from there to make the tapers. But power strokes uh, mean we don't have to do this. So we're going to look in closer at this, uh, her face stroke here. Now, outlined paths aren't inherently bad. They still look fine. The problem is if you want to change something, uh, you're going to need to change both paths and then spend a lot of time lining it up. You're probably not going to be able to do it perfectly. And so really, if you want to change something, you have to do it all over again. So you got to get it right the first time. Power strokes allow you to keep changing things after you've made them. So to make a power stroke, it's simple. You'll use your pen tool and uh, just make a stroke like you normally would. Uh, so that part is exactly the same. And actually, um, you can create a power, like make it have it automatically create a power stroke. I prefer to start with a normal stroke and then convert it, but I guess that's preference. So we're going to make our stroke real quick here. And it doesn't have to be perfect for now. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to use a different color for the, for the stroke color here, uh, just so you can see the difference between the original and now my new power stroke. So once you have your stroke, you're going to want to set the width. You're going to want to set the width before you convert it to a power stroke. Uh, this is just because well, power strokes are great for modifying the width. They're not so great for setting a general width. That's a feature that's still in development. So once you've got your stroke ready, you want to hit add path effect scroll down to power stroke. Normally it'll be set as the default, but you may need to scroll to it. So now looking, it looks pretty much the same, but there's a few key differences. Uh, first of all, you'll notice on the path, there's these pink dots. Those are your width points, and that's what you're going to be using to actually control the variance in width. So you can see, you can actually drag these around and have the width change. You'll also notice that it is a fill color now instead of a stroke. That's the way power strokes work, is they will actually turn it into a fill. Uh, so that'll be important later on. But for right now, you'll just know it's a, fit, it's a fill and it's a stroke, and you can still modify it like a stroke. You'll also notice in your path effects dialog, you've got a whole bunch of new controls. If you want to create tapers, which is what we're doing, you want to go to the start and end cap. Set those to zero width and that'll create a taper on both sides. If you only want taper on one side, leave the side you don't want, uh, leave it as a butt. But in this case, we do want to taper both, so we're going to leave it as zero width. Next, you're going to want to look at your interpolator type. I prefer to use Cubic Bezier Smooth. Cubic Bezier Johan uh, may also work well for you. And then just adjust the point to where you want the taper to start. Alt click the point and you'll get a dialog that lets you set the exact width. We're using a 4 in this case. So yeah, when you're dragging your nodes around, it's not exact, but uh, so you want to get them in approximately the right position, then you can set the exact width. So there you go. Nice, quick, easy. Say you want more control over this. Uh, you're not going to want to use Cubic Bezier Smooth. Cubic Bezier Smooth will only interpolate between two points. It doesn't uh, go over the entire path. If you need to do more complex uh, or want more control over it, you need to switch to the Cubic Bezier Fit Interpolator. And you see already it'll look a little different. 
And then you're going to need to add more points to add uh, to really define how your tapers are going to look. So to add another point, you want to control click on a point and you'll duplicate it. And then once you've duplicated it, you can drag your additional point and position it how you want. So I usually find one or two points in between the end and the node that sets the width is fine. For these in-between points, since they're just defining a taper and not really setting an exact width, you don't need to set your exact width with them. You can if you want, however. If you need to delete a point, control click and it'll delete. And there you go. One thing to note, you must have a handle on the node you're tapering to. If there is none, then you will, it won't work. There we go. Yeah, so you can see it's not going to taper properly if I don't have a handle on it. But as soon as I add a handle, it'll taper no problem. So once I, I do like the uh, Cubic Bezier Smooth Interpolator, so that's, that's the one I'm going to use. Another cool thing that Power Strokes allow you to do is they have an extrapolated and extrapolated arc joins. Normally, with vectors, you're just stuck with a miter join. What a miter does is it'll follow the... Where can I find that? Yeah, beveled. So a miter will just take these two points and make a triangle to make the point. What extrapolated does is it'll actually follow the curve all the way up to the point. So it'll look a lot cleaner. So now we have our power stroke and it's tapered nicely, but we can still change it very easily because it's still a stroke and it's no hassle at all if we need to make an adjustment. Now, what happens if we want to add a fill? Obviously, we can't just add a fill color because the power stroke already is a fill. If we try to add a fill, it's just going to change the color of the stroke. So we could use uh, the old method, uh, which would be, you know, make another object that is hidden by the stroke. And that'll work. The problem is if I now want to adjust the stroke, this fill object isn't going to follow it. And, you know, it's, easy, it's a lot easier to make mistakes. As you can see here, uh, I adjusted some stuff and then it's got a hole. So instead, what we can use, what we can use is called the fill between strokes path effect. It's got a hockey. Just select your stroke, control alt F, and there you go. It'll create a fill color, but it's a separate object, so you can adjust its color. And you can put it on top, put it underneath. You can put it in separate layers. You can clip it differently. You can use it as a clipping path. And if you adjust your stroke, because that fill is linked to the stroke, it's going to follow it. So if I want to pull the stroke in here, the fill is going to follow. Now, the cool thing about fill between strokes is you can actually link it to two different strokes. So if I had another stroke out here, for example. So I've got these two strokes. I want to make a fill between them. I just need to select both strokes, Control alt f and it's going to create a fill between both of those strokes. Uh, right now, it's only working between two strokes, but in the future, hopefully, we'll add more. So you can, you know, fill your entire pony with one fill. But right now, this is still very good. You can use it all over the place, have it overlapping. You shouldn't need to add any extra objects to complete your fill. One thing with this, you might run into a problem where you'll do your fill between and you'll get this kind of thing going on. If you see this happen, there's this little reverse second checkbox. Just select it and it should fix your problem. If it doesn't, you may need to add another path and sort of relook at how your vector is looking, but this will solve your problem most of the time. So thanks for watching my tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions for a future tutorial, let me know and I'll see what I can do.